read the story of the sick with the man that was sick with palsy where his four friends carried him to the roof i decree and declare that even as he was carried to the roof another level that he ripped the roof off i declare Hello, I'm Pastor Lee, Senior Pastor at Cardia Kingdom Church, and I'd like to welcome you to our virtual service today. I'm extremely honored that you decided to worship with us today, and I want you to know that we're glad you're here. Please make yourself at home. Please feel free to interact with us here in our virtual worship center, and do take a moment to say hi, say amen, or whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Amen? Listen, I pray that God touches you today, and that you leave this service today inspired, blessed, and ready to go receive everything God has for you. Again, welcome and enjoy the service. Hello everybody, I'm Erica here with this week's announcement. If you are a member of Cardia but have yet to put your name on the roll, please click the Become a Member button at the end of the service and complete a new member profile your membership official. Do you have any special announcements you'd like to share with the church? Great! Send us an email to Cardia Christian Fellowship at gmail.com. We will be sure to add your announcement to the following week's church announcement segment, prayer request. If you have an immediate prayer request, click the prayer request button right here in the virtual worship center and submit your prayer request. Or send us an email to Cardia Christian Fellowship at gmail.com and we will be sure to add you to our prayer list. This week, we're asking the church to join us in prayer for our brother, Cord Dillard, and also Vivian Knight. We come together as testing and agreement for 100% total healing in the name of Jesus. Remember family, election season is upon us. And as kingdom people, we are concerned with more than just the affairs of the four walls of the church. We must represent the kingdom and make sure our voices are heard. Be sure that you are a registered voter and that you show up and vote in all of our local and national elections. Early voting has started. Make sure you go out and vote. Amen? Amen. Family, we want to let you know that at Cardia Kingdom Church, every member is a minister. So be sure to always spread love and positivity everywhere you go. Also, be sure to go on all of our social media accounts every day. Every day? Yes every day and share our posts to your pages we are now on facebook instagram youtube and now even tiktok so go
go. Go today, right after service, and like and follow all of our social media pages and be an active part of the ministry. You never know who in your circle may need to hear or see those messages. Remember, love is an action word. Amen. Amen. Well, that's it for this week's announcement. May God bless you and enjoy the service. I'm Juliani here to remind you to get social. Get social by inviting people to church. So right now, you can just click the little button right here in the virtual worship center. Get social by interacting live in the virtual worship center during the service at any time. You can say amen, say hi, read fit your favorite sermon point, or just say thank you, Jesus. Get social by following us on all social media platforms. Yeah, right now we're okay. Okay, this is Kaviana reminding you to get social. Bye! Well, praise God, family. Welcome to our communion service here at Cardia Kingdom Church. I ask now that you prepare the elements as we prepare to take communion. The importance of this practice is to follow Jesus' instruction to remember his body and blood sacrifice through the elements and to give thanks as believers in unity. Amen? The power in obeying this command of Jesus is incalculable. Many have received miraculous healings in their body, uh, healing from trauma and soul wounds, answers to prayer and strategic God solutions to issues in their everyday lives all because of their obedience to the Lord's commands. Amen? So we do not take communion lightly. This is also a time to reflect on the condition of your heart and on the caliber of your walk. If there is anything in your heart or in your walk that you know needs to be corrected and repented of, now is that time. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we bow before you in humility. And we ask you to examine our hearts today, O God. Show us anything that is not pleasing to you, Lord. Reveal any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion or unforgiveness that that may be hindering our relationship and our walk with you, O God. We know that we are your beloved children, having received you into our hearts and having accepted your death as penalty for our sin. The price you paid covered us for all time and our desire is to live for you. As we take the bread representing your life that was broken for us, we remember and we celebrate your faithfulness to us and to all who receive you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favor. Thank you that your death gave me life, life abundant, life now and life eternal. As you instructed your disciples, we too receive this bread in remembrance of you. And in the same way, as we take this cup representing your blood poured out from a splintered cross, we realize that you were the supreme sacrifice for all sin, past, present, and future. Because of your blood shed for us, O God, your body broken for us, O God, we can now be free from the power and penalty of sin, both now and forever. Thank you, Lord, for your victory over death. Each time we take communion, Lord, we recommit our lives We recommit our hearts and our thoughts and our everything to you, O God. Fill us today with your precious Holy Spirit. It is in the holy and matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 24 reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take and eat, eat ye all. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 25 reads, After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Take and drink, drink ye all. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise God, family. At this time, we'd like to extend the opportunity for each and every one of you to sow into this ministry. One of the things we prayed at the very beginning of this ministry was, God, make this ministry good ground, so that as each person sows, you would bless them with abundant harvest. Amen? So as you sow into this ministry, you're sowing into good ground. You can expect God to bless everything you sow, because this is good ground. Amen? We are a church of abundant givers because we honor God so passionately. And we're grateful not for what he's going to do, but we're grateful because of what he's already done. Amen? We are also a 100% tithing church, not because we know God is going to prosper us, but because he has already prospered us. And we tithe out of honor, not out of obligation. So, let's speak our giver's confession. Say this out loud with me. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, Every man, according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. I am a cheerful giver. I am a 100% tithe. I am the head and not the tail. I live above only and never beneath. I live with a grateful heart. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I'm blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out. I am full to overflowing. I am abundantly supplied. I sow this seed in good soil. I have never seen the righteous forsaken for his seed begging bread. I am a soul and will never lack seed. And it is so now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, family, there are three ways to give today. Number one, you can click the Give button in our virtual worship center. Number two, you can send a cash app to Dollar Sign Cardia Church. That's Dollar Sign C A R D I A C H U R C H, and you'll see our logo. Number three, you can just visit our website at www.cardia.church forward slash give. Amen. We thank you in advance for your support of this ministry. We believe that you will be blessed abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. of these issues do you care about? What if you could influence how they were legislated? What if you could impact the outcome of the next election? What if you could change the course of America? Why? Why? Why did Jesus come to earth? Why forsake the majesty and fellowship of heaven? Exchanging a palace for a stable. Immortal comforts for a feeding trough. And robes of glory for the feeble body of an infant. An unparalleled irony, this supreme, unrivaled nobility experiencing absolute and total humility. Our sovereign God, Emmanuel, as a baby. 
He didn't come to heap shame upon sinners or to judge and cast out the impious, but to break bread with those called unrighteous. He didn't come to illuminate every mystery of the cosmos or to enlighten the intellectual, but to fulfill the testimony of prophets clothed in rags. He didn't come to elevate a single nation or to advocate a particular political affiliation. He came because he saw you broken in need of salvation. He saw you lost and abandoned, crying out, surrounded by deaf ears, fighting through the tears, but beaten down by the torments of this world. And unable to bear your distress, he renounced his eternal throne, walked the earth, bore the stripes, accepted the nails, and gave up his last breath, so that you could receive the breath of life. holy, infinite God, beheld your pain, perceived your heart, and determined that your soul was worth dying for. From the manger, to the cross, to the empty tomb, it is all a story of profound love, of a Savior who rescued his children from darkness of a blameless king who declared that no sacrifice was too great for the sake of his beloved creation. Why did Jesus come to earth? He came for you. Well, praise God, family. I hope you came today expecting God to speak to your hearts today. I hope you came today expecting God to move in your life in a new and dynamic way, because that's exactly what God is getting ready to do. Amen? People of God, I love how our God is so inexhaustible. You can never get to the end of God. You can never reach to the top of God. God is always revealing new facets of who he is, and he's always doing new things in us, for us, and through us. Amen? So it's important that as his people, as his children, as his ecclesia, it's important that we remain open and sensitive to how he wants to move and, and what he wants to do. Amen? So, so that when God says move, we move just like that. So that when God says flow, we flow just like that. Amen? Today, God is moving us forward in our Yes, You Can series. On last week, God gave us a word entitled Victim to Victor, uh, where God healed some of the trauma, keeping us bound and operating in a can't-do spirit. Amen? God gave us a bridge in the spirit, and we crossed over from victim to victor. Victors filled with a can-do spirit, with brand new identities. So now we will never again identify as victims. From now on, we identify as victors in Jesus' name. Victors ready, able, and willing to do everything God has called us to do. Amen? Well, today as we flow in the spirit with the move of God, we have three very special guests today that will give us three secrets to activating the can-do spirit. See, family, God is preparing us to truly be kingdom people, people that will do his will and advance his kingdom beyond the four walls of the church and into every sphere of influence on earth, amen? Be it government, education, commerce, entertainment, media, finance, and everything else, all right? And in order to do that, he has to truly equip us and send us out with the keys we need to be much more than just church people. Amen? God is transforming us into people that can take dominion and cause his will to be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Say amen to that. So today God has sent us three kings, three generals, and ironically, the three men that have most shaped my life and consequently this ministry, he's sent them here to share with us the three secrets to activating the can-do spirit so we can go out starting today to preach and teach and manifest the kingdom. See, family, we're in the end game now. We are no longer church first people. We are now kingdom first people. 
And as we enter the end game, now it's our job to preach and manifest the kingdom because this is the dispensation that has to prepare the way for the Lord. Say amen to that. Do you not realize that the word literally says in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Say amen, somebody. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us here today. We, your people, have gathered together to hear from you and you alone today, O oh God. We've come and gathered together today as you've commanded, Lord. We've come today with hearing and hearkening hearts, O oh God. We are prepared to do everything we hear, O oh God. We love you, we praise you, and we seek to walk upright before you in all our ways, O oh God. We thank you in advance for what you are about to do in us, O oh God. It is in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Now then, let's read a little bit here from this 17. We, we, we've set it up for you now. Let's, let's start with the uh, 24th verse. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, that, that was Goliath, fled from him, fled from him, and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake. That means David said. When you speak something, you say. Now I want you to count those, how many times he said something. And David spake, or that is, he said, to the men that stood by, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. And the people answered him after this manner say, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. Eliab was one of those men that ran from him. It says they fled from him. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake. That's the second time said he spake or said. <laughs> After the same manner, and the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him, that is the giant, the Philistine, Goliath. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. David was just a seventeen year old shepherd boy, teenager. Thou art a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said, Man, he just kept saying it, didn't he? David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. Well, I'm not going to read any further. My Lord, all he's doing is just bragging on himself. 
attracting attention unto himself, telling what all he did. Now, all let's go on read and get the whole story. Are you listening? Thy servants slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, notice again, said, Moreover, the Lord, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Well, we'll not read about Saul, you know, tried to put his armor on him, but it didn't fit. He didn't take it. It wouldn't go. So David just took his shepherd's crook, and, and then he took his sling in his hand, you know, took five smooth stones. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest against me with staves? See, he had his shepherd's crook in his hand. Staves or sticks. In other words, am I a dog that you just come out with a stick? Well, he felt insulted, sent a kid out there with a stick in his hand. <laughs> and the Philistine cursed David by his God. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and unto the beast of the field. Then said David. Did you ever count how many times he either spake or said? Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, with a spear, with a shield, but I come to thee in the name, hallelujah, of the Lord of hosts. Thank God he's still the Lord of hosts. Amen. The God of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hands. Or hands. And I will smite thee, and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there's a God in Israel. Amen. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is, is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Well, what did David get? He got exactly what he said. I said he got exactly what he said. Well, let's go back there to the original where we started, back over there to the fifth chapter of Mark again. For she said, and apply it to healing, for she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And he said, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Now, I tell people all the time, if you're not satisfied with what you have, you've created it yourself. I know you laid it on somebody else, but you created it yourself. Well, if you're not satisfied with what you have, quit believing what you're believing and saying what you're saying. And start believing what you want created and saying what you, you, you want done. And it will become. Because, you see, what she said was her faith speaking. What you say is your faith speaking. I used to, in dealing with people, particularly on a one-to-one -one basis, eating, would say, ask them, will you be healed now and I'll lay my hands on you? Well, I sure hope so. I'd always have to say, well, you won't be then. Sometimes they'd say, well, I will if it's the will of the Lord. I said, well, you still won't be because it's God's will, all right, but you don't believe it is, so it won't be. And then you had to try to take time to teach them, to get them to see. Because, you see, in the final analysis, it's according to your faith. When Jesus touched these two blind men's eyes, see, now a lot of people get their eyes on, well, Jesus touched them. If he touched me, I'd be all right. Well, he touched them and said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Didn't he? 
I said, didn't he? Not one single time in the four Gospels, now don't misunderstand, we can help people to a certain extent with our faith, but not one single time in the four Gospels did Jesus ever say to one living soul, according to my faith, so be it unto you. Not once. Not once. Not one single time did he ever say, according to the apostles' faith, so be it done unto you. When the man came to him in the ninth chapter of Mark, the man whose son was a lunatic, and oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft times into the water. And he said, I brought my son, you see, to thy disciples the other nine that was the foot of the mount where Jesus had taken Peter, James, and John with him on the Mount of Transfiguration. I brought him to thy son, and they could not cure him. If thou canst do anything, if thou canst do anything, have mercy on us and help us. And what did Jesus say? Mark 9, 23. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe us. Praise God. Let's stand up. Praise God. Because all things are possible to him that believe us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Get ready to sing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's praise God. Let's praise God. Because all things are possible to him that believe us. To him that believe us. To him that believe us. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. Ha ha. I want you to say it out loud. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. Now say that again. All things are possible to him that believeth. Say that again. All things are possible to him that believes. Now shut your eyes and say it out loud. Listen to your own voice as you say it. All things are possible to him that believes. Say it again. All things are possible to him that believes. Say this, and I believe. I believe. Now let's say it together. All things are possible to him that believes, and I believe. All things are possible to him that believes, and I believe. Say it again. All things are possible to him that believeth, and I believe. Keep your eyes shut and listen to your own voice. Say it. Say it again. All things are possible to him that believeth, and I believe. Say it again. All things are possible to him that believeth, and I believe. One more time. All things are possible to him that believeth, and I believe. Hallelujah. Excellent people are more concerned with getting ahead rather than getting home. Most of the people that are employed on jobs wait for five o'clock. They live for lunch times. But a real, true, excellent spirit has a spirit of paying the price for the goal. They work not to get home, but they work to build a home. And there's a difference. They go beyond the call of duty into personal pride. Wow, I like that. An excellent person goes beyond the call of duty into the realm of personal pride. They say, I'm doing this because this represents me. When they do a job, they do it because there's a sense of personal pride involved, not working for someone else. That's a spirit of excellence. They see their work as their signature. That's a good thing to note. An excellent spirit sees its work as its signature. If you are ashamed of what you've done, then no one else should see it. 
If you are ashamed of what you have accomplished, then no one else should see it. Everything you do should be your signature. As a matter of fact, your life should be so excellent that whenever people walk past something you did, they can always say, I know who did that. Just by the way it is done, it's your signature. Number nine, make excellence a lifestyle. We got one more after this and then we take a break. Number nine, make excellence a lifestyle. Everybody say lifestyle. Come on, leaders, say lifestyle. Come on, lions, say lifestyle. Let the eagles say lifestyle. That's important. Excellence must be a lifestyle. What does that mean? Do it right the first time all the time. Mediocrity is a personal trait. Excellence is a choice like attitude. You choose to be excellent. People will see you before they hear you. <laughs> so look good to yourself. How many of you ever put on a suit or a dress or a pantsuit or I mean and you just knew you look good anybody ever felt that way of course you did don't look so shy I mean there's some clothing that just look good on you now there's some you wear you kind of put up with them you know and uh, you don't feel too good but there are certain things that you put on they just look good what do you do you can't wait to go out <laughs> Matter of fact, that's the one day you are very conspicuous. Hello, hi, hello, everybody. Hey, how you doing, girl? Good to see you, brother. Right on. Hey, hi. Why? You just know. You look good. <laughs> clap. That's a good place to clap. You know it's true. Why? Because the excellent spirit is upon you. You see, People will see you be, before they hear you. So when you look good to yourself, you're proud to talk. An excellent spirit is a spirit that's a lifestyle. It always looks good, feels good, works good. I have a, a principal in our company, and we have a staff of over... 52 full-time workers work in our office and another staff of 267 volunteer workers that work with me so we got a staff of over 300 people and there's a law that we have throughout the whole office ever since we started the company it's a personal original statement that I came up with for my own life and I taught it to my whole staff and the leaders in our whole country and our whole uh, uh, company and it's this if you can't do it right, don't do it yet. I want to encourage you to adopt that attitude in your life and in your business and in your work. Say it with me. If you can't do it good, if you can't do it right, say it. If you can't do it right, don't do it yet. Say it. Don't do it yet. That's the attitude of excellence. Why? Because you only have one time to make a lasting impression. When you go to present your program to a group of people, put on your best clothes and put on your best cologne and perfume and, and fix your hair the best you can and walk in there with your best walk and give them your best stand and, and talk with your best articulation and impact them with your best breath. Why? You only got one time to make a lasting impression. Every time a man sells diamonds and he ain't wearing none, you better doubt the diamonds. If a man's selling fish, he don't eat fish. 
You better doubt the fish in the market. If we are going to become leaders that inspire people to become leaders, then we have to look like leaders, act like leaders, even relate to each other as leaders so they can see how we relate at our level, so they can be inspired to do the same at their level. We are the manifestation of our own lifestyle of excellence. Your appearance is the platform for your presentation. So be excellent in your physical appearance. I want to give you a challenge, a simple one. Here's your homework until I see you again. Study class. <laughs> simple assignment. Study class. Spend the rest of your life studying what is class. Hopefully first class. Even if you ain't there yet, study it. Because whatever you study, you begin to think. And whatever you think, you become. Because as a man think it, so is he. If you don't think excellence, you cannot be excellent. Remember, write this down. Quality is never an accident. Your house is not beautiful by mistake. Your room is not cleaned, but you didn't intend for it to look so. <laughs> Quality is not an accident. It's a decision and a result of hard work. And finally, excellent spirits. Never compare yourself with others, but with yourself. Take that to your downline, but begin it in your own life first. I repeat, never compare yourself with others, only with yourself. People of excellence never look at what other people are doing and use it as a measure for their success. Excellence, write this down, is competition with yourself. Excellence is competing with what you did last to see if you can do it better. Excellence is striving to complete what your mind says you know you could do better. Excellence is self-competition, not other competition. Striving to outdo yourself is excellence. Celebrate what makes you an individual. You were born an original, remember? So don't become a copy of someone else's mediocrity. Look at people, but don't let them, them make you what they are. Some of you have accomplished a certain level of success in this business, but I'm warning you, don't ever become so impressed by what you've accomplished that you cease striving to accomplish what you could. Compete with yourself. Attitude, standard, state of mind is the secret to life. Excellence is a spirit that produces an attitude that results in a way of thinking that manifests in a way of life. with a threat for every one of theirs. Amen. With everything they do to you, you do it right back to them. God looks down on that fight and say, I can't get in this. The only way I get in it, you've got to obey me. My angel has got to be able to distinguish between who is on the Lord's side. And when he sees that you are clothed in humility, clothed in the righteousness of God, suffering wrong rather than do wrong, Hallelujah. Being lied on rather than lying on. When the angel of God sees that you are living by his precept, then your enemy is in trouble. Glory to God. God said, when you act right, I'll be an adversary to your adversary. And God doesn't care who your adversary is.
adversary may be the person uh, that's on the job who has to certify your activity for you to get your check but if you let them act a fool and you act like a child of God God said my sword is drawn against your enemy and not drawn against you oh, let me hurry up and get through with this he sent his angel before Hezekiah into the camp of the Assyrians oh you know the story hallelujah Sennacherib had sent that word to let Hezekiah know that I'm going to attack Jerusalem and you in trouble and nobody else's God has been able to save them and your God won't save you but Hezekiah took that letter went into the temple and spread it out on the altar before God and when he spread it out God sent one angel that conquered 185,000 soldiers in one night. It doesn't take God 10 years to clean up what the enemy is trying to do to you. Amen. I preached on it a couple of Sundays ago. God doesn't need but 24 hours. Oh yeah, he can turn this thing around in 24 hours. You ought to look at somebody and tell them it won't take God a lifetime for you to recover from what your enemies have plotted. Just give him 24 hours and he'll turn it around. Mm. Hallelujah. Like I say, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all go in a few minutes, but I, I, I just don't wanna rush this. I'll soon get through. But finally we get to the position of God is for us. When God is for us, that simply means that the scales are already tilted in our direction. So when I was a youngster, we used to go and uh, mother might send me to buy some meat of some sort and get so many pounds and whatever you got in pounds you know you had to use the balancing scale and in that day it was easy for a person to cheat you all they had to do was just put it on your side and just kind of put the thing on it and it'll add weight to your side Hello? But if weight was added to the other side. Oh, you don't hear me now. Then it simply meant that you could get a little more. God has a way that when he's fire, he tilts the scale in your direction. It doesn't matter what the enemy said. Things are already fixed. I don't worry if God is for me because the battle is already fixed. My portion is already certified. <laughs> somebody, somebody told me one day, so you know, somebody said that, that they know you aspiring to go to a certain height in the church and they're going to do everything in their power to stop you from going there. I thought, that don't, that don't bother me. Because I don't want to go nowhere that God doesn't want me. And, and if God has spent 60 years of my lifetime, not mentioning what he did even before I was in my mother's womb, if he spent 60 years of my lifetime preparing me for something, anybody who decide I'm going to jump in the way, baby, your fight ain't with me. Your fight is, is with the man whose plan you're trying to upset. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. 
You ought to tell somebody when God is fire, it's already fixed. You don't even have to wait till the battle is over. When God is fire, victory is certain. And you don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can start shouting right now. I'm going to hurry up and get through with this, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said in Romans 8, 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Do you believe God is for you? You just ought to stand up and tell three people, if God is for you, nobody can triumph being against you. Ooh. I'm trying. I'm trying to get through with this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen at the psalmist. Sit down, y'all. I'm almost finished. In Psalm 124, verses 2 and 3. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Woo. Woo. Yes, if the Lord hadn't been on your side, you would have already lost your home. You would have already lost your job. You'd already be in the cemetery. The devil would have already destroyed you. But thank God, and on my side yeah finally the message that the angel gave to Joseph at the birth of Jesus they shall call his name Emmanuel which means God with us. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are accepting God with us. All of heaven's resources, all of heaven's provisions, all of the powers of God are somehow invested in Jesus. And when God is with me, if I got Jesus on the inside, it doesn't matter where I go. I hear David say, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even there I'll fear no evil because thou art with me. You're leading me with your word. You've got my bodyguards behind. Goodness is on one side. Mercy is on the other. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy follow me all of the days of my life. Yes, quit thinking about Jesus as just being another religious teacher, another Confucius, another Laodis, somebody to be compared with Buddha and Muhammad. When you got Jesus, you got God with you, God in your walk, God in your talk, God ready to defend you. God ready to bless you. When you get sick, he's God ready to heal you. Yes! God is with us. God! Is he with you? Is he with you? 
Come on and hug somebody and say God is with us. Yeah. <laughs> my God, my God. Do you now see why I let the generals deliver the word themselves, people of God? I could have taken these secrets and tried to distill the points down, but there is absolutely no way anyone could have done this any justice. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So today, family, we must remember that as kingdom citizens, we must never be hearers of the word only. We must also be faithful to do what we hear, to put into practice what we hear. Amen. Today, we have received the three secrets we need to activate the can-do spirit so that we can go out and do what God has called us to do and be who God has called us to be. Amen. So we must declare today to be doers right now and from this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we come to you in prayer today to thank you and to praise you for all that you are and for all that you have done. Lord, we declare that from this day forward, we will speak your word and declare your word out loud so that we will have the power to bring to pass in our reality everything that you have assigned to us, O oh God. We will take these secrets and go forth to bring to pass in the earth everything you've ordained, promised, and ordered, O oh God. If you said it, we will say it. If you promised it, we will receive it by faith. Lord, we will go forth and unleash the power of personal excellence in our everyday lives, O oh God. Lord, we know you are a God of excellence, and we now raise our standards, O oh God, and we will live in excellence from this day forward, Lord. We will represent you in the earth, and we will represent you in excellence in every way, O oh God. And finally, Lord God, we will go forward into purpose with boldness and confidence, knowing that you are with us, O oh God. And we know that if God be for us, who can be against us? Thank you, Lord, for revealing your truths to us, Father. We thank you for giving us the keys to the kingdom, O oh God. We will go forth and do your word and live in your truth, Father. We thank you for moving in our lives in a very real, a very tangible, and a very practical way, O oh God. And we declare right now that it is in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. And we all come into agreement by saying amen and amen. Hallelujah. Right now, I'd like to take this time to extend the most important invitation you've ever received. I'd like to invite you right now to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I believe if you're listening to me right now, it's time you receive the free gift of salvation, eternal life, and entrance into the Lord's kingdom and his royal family. And as you begin this new life in Christ, there are a few key scriptures you need to build your faith and begin your new walk upon. Number one, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Number two, Acts 4 and 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In other words, salvation is not and cannot be found in anyone else. Thirdly, John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. And then finally, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. Listen carefully. It reads that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Close your eyes and pray this prayer uh, aloud after me. Amen. Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. The Word says that you love me and that you died and rose again so that I might have a legal right to salvation by grace through faith. Jesus, your word says that if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that I will be saved. Well, Lord Jesus, I believe and do not confess this truth. 
Therefore, based on the truth of your word and on the faith in my heart, I declare and confess now that I am saved. Family, if you pray this prayer today, will you notify us by clicking the I'm saved button in the chat and giving us your contact information so we can now send you some information materials to help you in your new walk of salvation? Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Now it's time to connect with a good Bible-based church so you can now begin to grow and begin to pursue your kingdom purpose. Amen and congratulations. Hello, everybody. I'd like to take this time to invite you to join Cardia Kingdom Church and let us be your new church home and your new church family. Amen. We are a church for people just like you. We are a brand new church with plenty of room for your gifts and callings to operate and grow. We invite you to come and grow with us and to partner with what God is doing in and through this house. Amen. We are on a mission a mission to enter, manifest, and build the kingdom of God and love his people very well while we're doing it. Amen? Listen, if you don't currently have a church home and you feel a call to join this church, this body of kingdom believers, I want you to know that you're welcome here. Listen, if you'd like to join this church, just click the Become a Member button right now in the Virtual Worship Center. And give us some information and we will receive you into this fellowship and we'll begin this journey together. Or, if you want to join some other time, just visit our main website and go to www.cardia.church forward slash become a member of, and just click the tab on the menu. Amen. Listen, I look forward to welcoming you as our newest Cardia Kingdom Church member very, very soon. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday at the same time. Go out and have an amazingly blessed week. Talk to you soon. God bless.